Hey, welcome to our Chapter 2 Virtual Lab. If you kind of miss the lab, need to get it made up, here you go. We're going to look at acid base. Now, it is a lab, even though I'm doing it here. I still have all my safety stuff. I've got my jacket on so things don't splash on my clothes. I will put on my safety glasses because I don't want some of these things splashing into my eyes. We always do want to think safety. Well, my question to you is, what is the proper order of solutions? from most acidic to least acidic, or from most acidic to most basic, depending on how you want to think about it. You need to make a prediction. Now let me run through what they are and make sure you pause before you go any farther. Make your prediction. This isn't really as much good unless you kind of have a thought of what they are. Just testing some background knowledge. First off, we have some window cleaner, like Windex. This is just the public brand of it. Then I have just basic isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, which you might find at any basic drugstore. This is sodium hydroxide. It's a common chemical we'll find in things like oven cleaners. It's actually used in manufacturing a lot. But anyway, sodium hydroxide, think oven cleaner. I have some key lime juice. So lime juice. I have acetone. Now this is straight acetone, but this is what you will find in fingernail polish remover. Acetone is the primary ingredient. And last but not least, baking soda. Now I have the baking soda in a aqueous solution. I've just got some dissolved in water, but without any further ado, here we go. So, I have the universal indicator already in my test tubes. We've already added it into there. You should be able to see that it is a kind of a light green color. I realize that my green screen sometimes this comes out a little funny, but kind of a light green color. And then I'm going to go ahead and just leave that up so we can see the coloring. And I'm going to add three drops of each one into it. And I'll come back later and I'll kind of swirl them all to make sure they're all there. So you need to make sure you get a sketch of the experiment. This is a great one to use colored pencils so you can kind of get the proper colors for each one. Then lastly, you can line them up as to which one is the most acidic, which is the most basic. All right, here we go. So Windex. One, two, three. My alcohol. One, two, three. My sodium hydroxide. Three. My lemon juice. Now, acetone has a tendency to eat through plastic. I'm not going to leave that one in there. And lastly, some baking soda. All right, now, let's get them all shook up. They so can get all mixed in. Windex, just my finger here. Alcohol, sodium hydroxide. Lime juice, looks like it's all nicely mixed. And baking soda. All right. Here we have our various colors after having them mixed. Make sure you get them out and arranged in the proper order based on their color coding. You can compare it to the chart here. I'll stick one up behind me. I'm not really sure how my lighting is working on the one below. Include your sketch and your conclusion. How close were you? Make sure in your conclusion it's based on data, based off of your prediction, and then make sure you label out with pH, at least in your sketch or in the conclusion, which ones was the most acidic down to the least acidic. First off, you need to include your independent variable. Remember, I always ask myself the same question. 
independent variable starts with an I, so I asked myself, what did I change? So in this experiment, what did I change? The dependent variable, pretty straightforward. It starts with a D, so I ask a D question. What's my data? What was my data? What was I literally recording? That will let me know what my dependent variable is. It's dependent on the independent variable. But I ask those separate questions in case if I get one wrong, I don't get them both wrong. So if I ask myself, what's my data? I'm always gonna get the dependent variable right, even if I miss the independent variable for some reason. And lastly, a control. In an experiment, you're always gonna have a control group versus an experimental group. Now, of course, in this case, we kind of had a lot of little experiments going on, right? So if you can't tell what the control group was, you ask yourself this question. What's normal? What was the normal? Or in this case, what were we starting with? And that's what was normal. We're looking at our indicator, what it was prior to anything being added. Make sure you finish everything off, get it nice and tidy, and we'll see you guys next time.